For today's quiz, we have a high pass filter. And a high pass filter is made using a simple capacitor and a resistor. Now these are a passive device. In other words, we don't have to have any extra power for them. We have an AC generator, which is gonna be our signal generator right here. We're gonna end up putting a capacitor and a resistor as shown here. And over here is our speaker. And this is just an old speaker. We use yellow wire so that we can see uh, how the circuit works. What I'll do is I'll connect it in a second here, but our question is, if this is a high pass filter, we want to know what are the frequencies that are going to be attenuated. And I'll give you a formula for that in a second, but let me hook this up. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take uh, my function generator and I'll connect a red wire with a yellow for the speaker. And then I'll take the other side and I'll hold these out front so you can see exactly how the circuitry is being put together. Connect those. Now I can turn this on and we'll be able to hear it right away. So first of all, put it on a sine wave and I'll take that down to a lower frequency. Over here I can adjust. This tells me what percentage uh, I have of, in this case, 100 sine waves. So if I go to 1.5, that means it's 150, and if I go over here to 200, 300, 400, 500, and so on, I can take it way down as such. Let me also turn on my oscilloscope so we can visually see this, and I'll connect one probe here, and then I'll put the other probe uh, right over here, like so. So now we can see and hear at the same time. I'm going to turn this off for a moment so I can give you our formula. The formula for the frequency cutoff, I could say uh, frequency cutoff is equal to 1 all over R2 pi RC. Now that we've got that, let's see if you can figure out what frequencies are going to be attenuated. So here's what your quiz looks like for today. I'll hold that up. As always, write out your answer as best as you can and then list your confidence. Typical student responses are, well, if it's a frequency cutoff, it's going to be frequencies above or below that value. Others will say, no, it's going to be exactly that frequency. So only cut off that one frequency. So as they're thinking through this, tell them to look at their schematic here and tell them to think about the components. That's a really big hint. And they're going to realize AC with a capacitor and a resistor. So hopefully that's enough of a hint to keep them going. A really good exercise for helping your students is to have them try to make and back claims. So ask your students, what do these components tell you? A few students will say right away, look, we've got a capacitor here with AC. We're clearly talking about capacitive reactants. And they are right. So let's write this out for them. We could say, reminder, capacitive reactants is one all over omega C. Now, they're going to instantly say, wait, 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 I think I remember that uh, the omega, the angular frequency, is just 2 pi f. So I could say uh, where omega equals my 2 pi f. So I can end up putting x of uh, c equals 1 all over our 2 pi f. And remember, we still had the c there. So now they've got a way to start thinking about frequency. They can already start making claims, but you might want to give them this one last hint because there's something special here that happens. Uh, at our frequency cutoff, our resistance equals our capacitive reactant. So um, we can use this little because symbol because uh, at frequency uh, cutoff, we end up having R, uh, R equals Rxc like that. In other words, our capacitive reactants is going to be R resistance at that point, which means we can end up writing this as we could say, well, this is really going to end up being 
resistance equals 1 all over 2 pi f c and they can now start to make and back claims about that formula. So give them a second and see what they can come up with. Some of your students are going to be pretty excited at this point because they can say, oh, look, it's that formula right there. I can say, uh, if I rearrange this, I can say my frequency is 1 all over my 2 pi, and then I'd have my RC. And that formula is the same as that one up there. Got it. So, but they still need to figure out, what does a capacitor do in this circuit? So they might end up saying, well, it might be easier just to use this formula right here. So if I ended up rewriting that again and said, my capacitive reactance equals one all over two pi uh, F C, they could say uh, as, and they can start making claims about this. They could say, well, look, as frequency, um, let's say increases here, they could say my capacitive reactance, look, if I put a bigger and bigger number on the bottom, this is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So it would decrease. In other words, higher frequencies are going to end up having less impedance. Or we could put the uh, inverse of this, or, in, or the opposite, we could say, or as frequency decreases, we could say our capacitive reactance increases. And that's the answer, right? That right there is going to be the answer. And I think most of them uh, have it from here. They're going to end up saying, look, the higher the frequency, it's not a big deal. But at low frequencies, of course, I'm going to end up having more impedance. And it's going to be harder to push anything, anything to that uh, speaker. And that makes perfect sense. Think about this. A capacitor at low frequencies almost seems like a, a short circuit. And in fact, we could say at a frequency equal to zero, right? We essentially have a short circuit, I'm sorry, uh, an open circuit. Hopefully I said that right. We could end up saying uh, that we have an open circuit. Okay. So in other words, we can end up saying, look, nothing's going to flow. And that's the answer. We could show you that now. Oh, uh, we still needed to figure out what that frequency cutoff was. So let's do that now. We can end up just plugging in our numbers. Force, uh, the frequency is going to be 1 all over our 2. I'm going to leave it as the pi symbol 3.14 because I'm running out of room. Here I'll put 1,000 ohms. And then I have to still put my cap of 1 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. I have to write this small because I'm almost out of board space. I'm going to put this into my calculator. And I can just put, I need some light here, 1 divided by 2 divided by, I have a pi button on here, divided by 1,000 divided by 1. EE negative 6 equals 159. So we'll just use that 159. So our frequency cutoff is 159 hertz. So what we should see on our system here is we should end up having an attenuation as we go lower than 159. And just so you know, the cutoff means at that point, we're only getting about 30% of the sound that we had to begin with at that cutoff point. And then from there, it should get less. So let me see if I can turn this on. Go back to my sine wave. All right, we said that we want about 159. So right now I'm on the 100, we can hear it. And we can end up going, I'm actually at 150, 160 right there. I hope the camera can still pick that up. That is a deep, deep bass and goes all the way down to 50 or 60, something like that. All right. And then, of course, it goes all the way up and I can go really high. But I'll take that back down and I'll put that here. Now, let me set up our circuit. 
All right, to get this ready, what I'll do is I'll use white wires and I'll use a resistor and then I'll just connect it to each side and that way uh, we'll be able to see how we're connecting this. So this is a thousand ohm resistor and then I've got my capacitor here. So let me uh, flip these around and see if I can do it in real time. So let's see here, I'll put this one, I'm gonna take all of this off. I wanna show you that I'm not changing any of the settings. So I'll just take this off and then from there, I'll end up putting my capacitor in between these two. So I'm gonna put this, this is a non-polarized capacitor. So I'll put this right in here like so. I'll put my other side over here on that capacitor. You can already hear it's attenuating. And then of course my resistor is gonna go after my capacitor down to the other side. And that is gonna really be kind of independent. So I've got my white and then here's my resistor to the other side, which I have right over here. And I'll just connect that on. So I now have it on there and you can hear that this is really, really low compared to what we had. In fact, um, if I went down lower, nothing at all. I mean, you can't hear, oops, I didn't turn this on. Um, so this is where we were before. You can hear a little bit of sound, but as I go lower, anywhere past this cutoff of 159 below that, I mean nothing. I mean, it's just nothing at all. So uh, you can see that I still have my signal going. It's just not... Uh, making it to the speaker at this point. So now here's what's interesting as I go above that 159 Well, the cutoff is really below that for a capacitor. So look, I'll still have all of my high frequencies, so I can end up having high frequencies And everything works. It's only when I go back down to that cutoff Which is about 160 right there and now you can barely hear anything below that pretty much nothing at all. So that is how we make a high pass filter. In case you haven't noticed, a real world example of this would be, if you have old cabinet speakers, you have different size. You've got a woofer, you've got your mid range and you got your high end, right? Well, what do we put on the back of them? We put a little capacitor, right? And that's how we can end up saying, look, I don't want any of these uh, low frequencies go into, uh, you know, the tweeter or the mid-range. Um, I want the low only going to the woofer. So a high-pass filter allows the higher frequencies to pass. So that's a real-world example. All your speakers end up using this. And it's just such a simple circuit, just a capacitor and a resistor. And it's really that capacitor that does the heavy lifting. All right, that's your quiz for today.